Hey, good afternoon, YouTube. Well, I think it's dead. So, I was uh, charging up my batteries to go a little flying today. You know, you probably saw that I was doing a little bit of, a uh, little bit of yard work. Uh, I thought I'd take a day off to go and have a little fun. Threw it in my helicopter. Well, actually, as I was charging it, I got an error saying cell 2 and 5 had a very high IR, and it even stopped the charge at one point, uh, telling me that uh, internal resistance exceeding limit. So I'm using the PL8 uh, with a bump controller uh, made by Reeve Electrics. It has some good software in it and it kind of helps monitor your battery as you're charging. And I was sitting right here and it went beep, 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 beep. And it was about 97% charged. So uh, I thought, well, what, let's have a look. One cell had an internal resistance of just about 4.5 and one was over 6.5. All the other cells were just around two. And I've noticed uh, over the last few months that this one's been creeping up in one cell. So I marked cell two and five, high IR, went out to the field, took it really easy just to see what would happen. Um, cell two came down at, uh, with one of my checkers. I got one of these things. It just tells me uh, percentage. Um, cell two came down, I think about 3.75 most of the other ones were 3.85 didn't want to push it and the cell 5 well that came down at uh it said 20 percent, so whatever you know lower than 3.6 so i was not happy i think this guy's done uh it has many 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 flights on it these are the ones i knocked to uh, i notched into it with a, a sharpie marker before i got the uh the thing that the bump controller that counts them all. And I think I got 50 or 60 flights on that at least. It's been around for a long time. I don't get a lot of flights in. So time to kill this. Uh, I'm up in Canada. I don't have a gun. I'm not gonna go shooting it. I'm not gonna put a nail through it. I want something a little bit more controlled. I got dogs and other stuff around here. And it's also like a fire season and we have burned things. So if I set something on fire, I'm in a lot of trouble. So I have an idea for a lipo discharger, and I got a bunch of these things. Um, this is a, I don't think you can, I don't know if you can see it there. I'm going to be very careful. It's a 100 watt, 10 ohm resistor. So put a little uh, XT60 on there. I have these little adapters for uh, charging batteries uh, off some of my chargers. So I thought, hey, plug it in, let's go. This thing got super hot. So let's see if we can make this a heat sink with a fan that uh, will kind of guide me as it's uh, getting lower and lower in voltage. So I have everything sort of working up. Uh, let's work at it. Coming over here to the workbench. I found this. Why I kept it, I don't know, but I have an old heat sink from a, an old computer. So my idea is I it, it can basically an M3 bolt will hold that thing on. I'm drilled and tapped one hole. I'm going to put a screw in that, hold that down, drill and tap this hole, mount it onto here. Uh, red and black should be power to the fan and yellow should be signal. I'll test that out. And I'm just gonna basically solder this directly on those two connectors and the fan should go once there's power applied. It's a, oh, it's a 12 volt DC fan, crap. Oh, well, maybe not. I'll have to figure that out. I'll go without the fan for a while, or I'll just hook up some other 12-volt source to this. Let me work on this. All right, so I got everything set up. Uh, this is the most cheesiest grade of aluminum I've ever come across. I could barely drill into it because it was so sticky. Should have used some cutting fluid, but I didn't have any, and I didn't want to get it all mucky and messy since it's going to get hot right away, and I didn't want something smoking. Um, so it's all wired in. Here is the plug on that. I'm going to use one of my ISDT Q6s as a monitor. Uh, you can see there, again, cell 5 is 3.73. Uh, that's come up a lot. Um, and then cell 2 is 3.78. So those two cells are just not happy. Um, they were really a lot lower, but they've creep, crept back up. Again, not telling me that they're dead. Um, so let me uh, work on this and uh, plug it in and let's see how this goes and see if this thing becomes like a little firecracker again or if this starts absorbing some of that heat. 
I uh, got the IR gun out, so let me get it plugged in and let's see what happens. All right, so no sparklies. Uh, now we're uh, really dropping the cells down that there's a little bit more resistance there. Let's uh, feel that there. It's getting warm, but it's not nearly getting as warm as it was before, so. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot. Okay, let's have a look and see what happens here. Let's get the uh, temp gun on it. Don't know how good it's going to work. Yeah, it's not really registering very nicely. Oh, there we go. 65 Celsius, 67. The uh, aluminum block itself is about 26. That's come up fairly quick. There's our top. There we go. Ooh, 81. Okay. We're getting warm. Yeah, it's getting pretty toasty. That's, uh... Well, we're stabilizing out about 89. Uh, yeah. Time's out after a little bit. Let's get, oh, 102 Celsius. We could boil some water there. 104. All right, so I'm going to let this cook for a little while. Let's have a look over here at the uh, temperatures or uh, the voltages. Yeah, we're dropping down a lot faster. These things will give a, a basically a, a, they'll kill a battery, but it's at, I think, 0 0.3 um, milliwatt hours or per hour. Or, like, it's really slow. Um, having on here for an hour, each shell dropped by, I think, 0 0.02 volts or whatever. So this, uh, I'm hoping, is going to speed things up. Yeah, the aluminum housing's getting warm. Yeah, it's definitely getting warm. So... Yeah, you don't want to be touching that for very long. I'm going to let this uh, percolate here for a while. The uh, wires are nice and cool, so we're not drawing a ton of amps. We're just getting a lot of heat out of this. And uh, let me see how this goes. It's uh, certainly making a lot more progress. And uh, once we get down past a certain voltage and the wadge comes down, it'll get a lot cooler. So it's just the first little bit. I may just take this down little by little over time. So just an idea. This is my idea of a LiPo killer. Probably work a lot better on a lower voltage shell than, than a big old 6S battery. But at least now I have something to kill these batteries and safely discharge them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, let me work on it. Well, Rex gave me a great idea. As usual, Shop Dog helped everything out. So he said, why don't you hook this up to a power supply? And then why don't you double the number of resistors on here so you get more power? So I went, okay. Uh, basically what I did was I took the first resistor, uh, attached it down low, made a little jumper between the two, kind of wrapped the, oh, if you, oh, there we go, wrapped it a wire around and soldered that on. So that's pretty secure. And again, these are 16 gauge wires and I'm only gonna be putting uh, maximum, maybe about five amps through here. So we're good to go there. Uh, what I did was I took the wires here, put an XT30 on there, hooked it up to my little squid. And since I have two of these Q6s, I have one working as a power supply for the fan, which I can increase uh, a little bit more if I need more cooling. Um, and then one is just acting as a, uh, basically a, uh, monitor for all the different cells um so let's now plug this in so these are going to be able to pull basically just around two and a half you know amps or just about 65 watts at 25 volts uh, it'll drop off as things go down so i tested it a little bit with one and the fan could easily keep up and this heat sink block stayed nice and cool so let's test this out with this beastie and let's see where things are at. So uh, before plugging in, we're at 3.76, 3.74 on the top two cells. I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna plug everything in. Okay, so I just plugged it in and it's definitely working a little faster. 
pulling things down fairly quick. It was at 22.2 volts, I think, or 22.1. It's already knocked it down a little bit. Let's have a, a little with the back of the hand. Well, they're both getting a little bit warm, so that's good. Those are working. Let's get the old temp gun out. Now, these things were getting up to, I think, 150-something degrees Celsius. So let's see how they do here now. Uh, coming up fairly quick. How about the bottom one? 76. Top one, 75. Yeah, that's doing pretty good. 78, 82. How about the top one? Well, they're getting pretty close together, so that's good. I think at least, you know, the resistances are fairly, uh, fairly consistent. We're not spiking as fast as we did before. Oh, let's get a, give another one there. The other ones would it would ramp up a little bit faster before. So now again, we're uh, dropping voltage on this thing fairly quickly. So the less voltage we have, the less amperage, the less wattage that we're going to be pulling out of here. So. It's really the first, you know, probably first five minutes of trying to kill a battery that's going to give us the most temperatures. 104, that was it. 107. Not bad, not bad. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at our voltages here. So in those few minutes, we're already down to 21.5. So that's pulling it down nicely. Um, don't let your finger touch the fan. It does kind of hurt a little bit. Uh, yikes. Oh, okay. Let's just have a feel of the... Okay, the heat sink is just a bit warm. Like, easily, I could comfortably touch it. Yeah, you don't want to be putting your fingers on the uh, resistors for very long, but this heat sink is easily keeping up with, uh, with any heat from those resistors quite comfortably. So that's a really good sign. So I know I can do two resistors on that. Let's take a final measurement here. So just kind of going over all of them, trying to see what's happening. So we're about 124, 125-ish. No, 124 seems to be our max there. Yeah, I saw 120. Oh yeah, 125 is the max temperature. So that's really great. Don't know if this helps, but if you have an old computer fan, if you have some of the Q6s, pick up a few of these resistors. Uh, if you have also um, some, uh, you know, a, a drill and tap and some screws, that really helps. Um, grab your soldering gear and go to town. So now I have a discharger. Ooh, you know, I have these little LiPo checkers that go beep, beep, beep. Oh, here we go. So what you could do is you could put one of these things in that makes a loud noise and you could just use this as a regular discharger and this is going to go beep, beep, beep when it's getting close to uh, whatever voltage you set for cutoff. Hey, there you go. Cheap discharger, free. I don't know, they're 10 bucks for five. Bit of wire, bit of soldering. There you go. So you can kill a battery, which this one's going to be uh, killed off. Yeah, middle cells are kind of squishy there. Uh, it's going to die tonight, and these guys got me all set up. So have a great evening, everybody. Go fly some stuff. Go make some mess in the workshop. Go cut some wood. Or if you're like Rex, just go have a nap on the floor.